Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it is going to be with me playing the new support for the BES slash Gradius slash Boss Rush deck. Now, this new card in the form of Great Fortress Zelos, the new field spell that you see now, is an amazing card for the deck. Now, this, this card is basically a Union Hanger, but for this deck. I don't know what Konami has gotten in their minds to print Union Hanger-esque cards, Union Hanger-esque field spells that replace themselves upon immediate activation. Like with Union Hanger being the originator, and then we have Reckless Magic Circle and Eidolons, and now we have this card, Great Fortress Zelos. This card has four effects, and all four of them are fantastic, and it's not even a limited activation to once per turn. For any of the like overall arcing effects of the cards, it's not name limited to you. You can only use this effect, or you can only activate one Great Fortress Zelos per turn. No, you can just keep spamming these, and that's ultimately a very, very huge asset to how this card functions, but... This is a piece of support for this deck, the BES archetype as it's more commonly known, which stands for Bacterian Empire Ship. They are a sub-series of bosses in the Konami arcade games, the Gradius Side Scrollers, and that's why you see my deck name up here is Gradius, as well as the fact that I said that this is a boss rush slash Gradius themed deck. Now, the Overall lore of this archetype is something I really enjoy and I really liked collecting these cards back in the day and in fact I still have all of the cards for this so this is actually a piece of support that I'm really happy for is because being the weeb that I am, being the anime lover, the Japanese culture lover, the Japanese game lover that I am, I played some of the Gradius side scrollers when uh, when you had you know access to them in like different forms and I'm not going to say what forms or whatever because I don't want to uh, I don't want to uh, implicate myself but anyway um, I played these games the, I played the Gradius side scroller and these monsters are designed and are the designs for the uh, for the Bacterian Empire ships the BES ships that you find as bosses in the stages of the Gradius games and their effects perfectly mirror how those bosses functioned having a series of three shields protecting their core that you had to destroy before you could destroy the ship and then there you have the three cores or the three uh, the three shields protecting the core in the form of the uh, in the form of the uh, counters that you put on the cards in the case of covered core it only has two counters uh, but whatever it's it's the, it's the basic theme is that they had shields protecting their core from destruction and that's how you had to fight the boss and so it's a very like lore based archetype that I really like because of the fact that I am, you know, very very in deeply enthralled by Japanese things, but this deck hasn't had any support since Elemental Energy, which was 2005. So it's been almost 12 years. In fact, it has been basically right at 12 years in the OCG, and by the time we get this card, it will have been 12 years as well since this deck got any form of support. But Great Fortress Zelos is a good addition to that support bracket. But so, this is going to be live dual commentary format because I really just wanted to go back to it. It's a lot simpler, and ultimately it's what, like, just kind of is the charm that my channel brought. And so, we're going to experiment with doing this. I need to get back into my groove of doing uh, live commentary because of the fact that, like, I went to post dual commentary for a while, and I got into a groove of that, and then I tried to do live dual commentary, like, once or twice, and it just I didn't feel right. Uh, but it is really the charm of what my channel brings, is being able to have long, thought-out discussions and like thought processes of how things can be played and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm not going to waste any more time in this section of the video because this video is already going to be probably longer because of the fact that it's live dual commentary. So let's just jump straight into the first game, shall we, and see what we get matched up against. Alright, so I have no idea how this is going to go. I just lost rock, paper, scissors, and I forgot to start the recording straight away. So I'm going second, and that is a huge problem for this deck, actually, because of the deck, as you saw in the deck editing uh, segment, the deck list portion of this video, it's very trap heavy. It's very trap based because you basically want to uh, you want to do that. You want to establish traps first, going first with your uh, with your big machines that are further supplemented by Great Fortress Zealous' effects. Now, if you don't know what this card does, let's take some time to read it right now. Oh, literally, set one card and pass. Um, time to win was your name, and I was hoping that that would be the case. But <clears throat> so I don't get to see any cool shenanigans. Now, the way this is going to go is that I am playing random people on the Yu-Gi-Oh Pro servers as time goes on. I may uh, like supplement it and like streamline it down to where I have a group of like people that I utilize like access through in like a Discord group or something. Maybe to uh, to you know have people to record with for uh, for at least a bigger variance of uh, of options. Or I might just start doing regular live streams where I just am specifically trying to play 
uh, for the channel. Uh, that could be the case as well. Uh, there are multiple different options that I could have here um, in terms of what I could do for live recording in the future is having a group of people or uh, maybe opening a Patreon uh, thing and having people pledge to be part of a Discord server that I personally make that involves uh, like talking to me on a regular basis as well as uh, I let people know when I want to record and like schedule people to record games. Uh, there's a bunch of different things. Now, I normal summon this turn and it's an old ruling on Boss Rush uh, from Upper Deck Days that may or may not still be valid that you cannot activate this card the turn that you normal summon or set a monster. So, unfortunate, but true. Um, is the case, but so uh, this big core Mach 2 has four counters on it because it gains three when special summoned. It's the only one that gains counters when special summoned, and uh, and Great Fortress Zealous gives it a counter, so it can't be destroyed by battle. It can't be destroyed by battle because of its own effect with the counters on it, and then it cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So that's really cool. That's the really key thing here. This card is when this card is activated, add a boss rush from your deck to your hand, so it searches boss rush. Great, right? That means you get to stack up multiples of them and start trying to go into your long game resource game. This is very much a long game style of deck where you just try to out-resource your opponent with big things. Um, ah, heroes. <clears throat> okay. So a hero lives coming down now, which means that that, that, that tells me that he just drew it. Um, so what I want to do is I don't think I'm really afraid of any sort of dark law. Um, I think I want to save the strike. I'm not afraid of Dark Law, I'm not afraid of Anki, I'm not afraid of any of that. I could just Floodgate Trap Hole whatever he summons off of Mask Change, uh, and then strike something else. So I'm not really too afraid of any of this situation. Yeah, Mask Change on the Shadow Mist here for probably... Oh, really? Just Dark Law? Straight? Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and Floodgate it just so that my stuff doesn't get banished, even though it's not even relevant. All that Boss Rush cares about is that the card was destroyed, so even like Fire King Island might be like a health, like a healthy thing, because it just has to be destroyed and sent to Graveyard. <laughs> so there is that. Like, that's all that has to happen, is that all you need is a big core or BES monster to be destroyed and sent to Grave, so you could probably just play Fire King Island um, and just have access to another field spell and play Garunix, and then you'd have access into going Fire King Island, popping one of these out of your hand, and then floating with boss rush in the end phase. Albeit that is very slow, it might be the option, because that would that would give you a way to put multiples on the board um, with, like, Zelos and stuff. So there's that. Um, now, he is going Utopia into Utopia the Lightning, which I'm not even afraid of. I don't think I'm going to strike it in any way. The only reason I would have to strike it is so that his Shadow Mist goes off and doesn't search here and now. Um, but he can't kill this in battle. But, yeah, I'm just going to strike it. I mean, I know this is Dark Law, so I guess we'll just strike, and that's fine. I'm very fortunate that he did not open well, um, and, like, that Hero Lives being his sixth card was the really big key thing there. Okay, so now he's got Insufficient. So, yeah, his hand was absolutely broken if he had that A Hero Lives in his hand. Um, but, yeah, so this card adds Boss Rush. Going back to discuss what this does, all of them gain 500 attack and defense, so that's good there. I'm going to attempt to uh, rematch. So he did not accept my kind, warm, welcoming offer for a rematch. So instead, we're going to be playing against someone else. Uh, and I've lost rock, paper, scissors, so I'm going second again, and this, this is a problem. But 46 card deck set to pass. Okay. Hmm. Interessante. Okay, now do I want to activate this first? Yes, I do. Activate this and attempt to get the boss rush out of my deck before I use Pot of Desires, because then that gives me, you know, less chance of hitting more boss rushes as well as it thins my deck by a card. So, uh, it always just fascinates me when uh, when people <laughs> when people just sit here and have to take a solid 10-15 seconds to read this card every time I play it, because it is so new. Uh, this card has only been like spoiled for three days or something like that. Okay, Sanctum's not going to do anything here. So, that's not something I'm too worried about. Yeah, because your moral tech is going to... is going to... Like, it's going to resolve and pop this after I've added Boss Rush. So your Moral Tech here is going to pop this card, which means I definitely have to get into one off of Pot of Desires, unfortunately. Uh, but, whoop, let's activate this. <laughs> so I have to draw into a Field Spell or a way to a Field Spell, and there it is. So let's see, did I banish the other... Uh, come on. Okay, good, I didn't banish the other one. I saw this one and got scared. <laughs> I got so scared. Uh, but so there's terraforming and there are there's one boss rush gone so I'll be able to add the other one as well I drew two of the field spell 
I drew the Planet Pathfinder and the Terraforming. Now I'm definitely just going to use the Terraforming to put the Field Spell on the board because of Boss Rush not allowing itself to be played if you Normal Summon or set that turn. And that's not something that I like, and it's probably a ruling that needs to be overturned because nothing on this card says that. It just says you cannot Normal Summon or set, period. It was literally an old Upper Deck ruling that is still being enforced on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, but I don't think that the OCG even has that ruling. Um, because it's not it's not stated as a as an official ruling, and I haven't been able to find a ruling resource linked to the upper deck ruling that uh, that gives any form of uh, any form of clarity to that. But regardless, we're going to uh, special summon this big core. We're gonna special it, and it's gonna lose its counter after it kills its moral attack. I'm gonna play two boss rushes, set dimension barrier, set starlight road, and pass my turn. So Maxi here, damn, my FPS just started chugging, uh, but that's okay. It jumped right back up. Uh, for some reason, it does that every time. Almost every time I activate the special summon effect, is that it'll just start chugging. Um, just because probably it has so much to process, this card does have four legitimate effects. Uh, <laughs> so it could just be trying to process this. Um, I mean, I, I can't disagree with it. But so we'll activate these because apparently there's also another outdated upper deck ruling that says boss rush has to be face up on the field to see the monster get destroyed or else you will not get it in the end phase, and that is also something that is coded into Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro currently, even though Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro normally operates off OCG rulings, in which none of these rulings are stated or have a ruling source. I should preface with this that I'm a little bit salty about the rulings <laughs> that are on this card, because those rulings didn't exist back when I this deck was pick up back in uh, back in those times. But, okay, so this is simple. What I'm going to do is he's going to... Oh, he's playing Wind Witch Eidolon Artifact. Okay, so now it makes perfect sense. Um, so he's going to special this. I'm going to wait until he puts all of his monsters on board, and then I'm going to Dimension Barrier called Synchros. And then next turn I'm going to be able to special my uh, Crystal Core out of my hand, get a counter. I'm going to be able to kill both of them, and that'll be good. So yeah, he's got the uh, Ice Bell, which he's going to special summon another Ice Bell. And then Ice Bell can burn me for 500. Uh, I think both of them can, in fact. No, you can only use you can only use each effect of one which ice spell once per turn. So I'm gonna get burned for 500 once, and and then once he summons uh, his tuner, I'm going to uh, I'm going to dimension barrier. But I can also dimension barrier calling fusion. So based off what I see him play, is going to dictate whether or not he uh, he gets to continue with his uh, string of plays. Uh, because let's see, reckless magic circle is coming down, which is fine. I have no answer for it, so he's going to be able to add the uh, Alaster, summon it, yeah. I'm going to try and rematch with this guy, because I would definitely love to have this video be dominated by uh, by fusion-based decks, which, you know, we already had heroes, and now we've got this deck, which is basically like the current anti-meta deck in the OCG, Eidolon Wind Witch Artifact. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I would, I would, I would prefer that greatly, uh, but so from here... He's got these two threes on the board, which I'm not too worried about. Okay, so Wonder Wand, that's going to be an issue, because he's going to be able to draw two free cards. I wonder why he didn't get the four. Maybe he just misclicked? I don't know. I, I don't understand. Maybe they're both in his hand? I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know. And this is information I would love to have, because, uh, because like he has access to things. But So we're going to activate this, and we're going to call Fusion. That way... This stays in his grave, he doesn't get to banish the Elaster. And so from there, his fusion plays are locked for the remainder of the turn. His Elaster stays in grave, so he doesn't get to recycle the uh, he doesn't get to recycle it off of summoning magic. I definitely don't think I'm going to be activating that. I could be wrong, I could just activate it. Um, because I do have a big enough deck size for it to uh, for it to be done. But I'm gonna start. Um, summoning more monsters. Now, how many of my things are still in the deck? Um, a good portion. I guess I could play this and try to draw him to traps. Because, I mean, I could, if I draw traps, I get to kill him. So, yeah, we'll just, we'll go for it. Um, I just, I need to be able to summon two in the end phase. Okay, another, another Starlight and a Warning. I guess I'm okay with the Warning. Um, now, so, Dimension Barrier, Tetrans are gone, but there's still one Tetran in the deck. Uh, and I think I only I play three covered cores, so there's still one of those in the deck. Yeah, I'm fine with this. Okay. Okay, okay. So we're gonna attack both of his uh, ice spells with these. This is gonna die at the end of the damage step because it doesn't have a counter on it to battle with. So this is going to die, and then uh, 
and then I'm going to be able to summon two in the end phase off of both of these Bosch rushes. I cannot say that. I keep saying Bosch, and that's definitely not correct. I blame Breakers of Shadow. <laughs> I blame that entire format. Boss Rush. Uh, so yeah, both of these will trigger. I've got a Starlight Road, so if he has Twin Twist or something like that, then I'm definitely going to be able to answer that. But so what I'm going to summon here is I'm going to summon uh, MK2 because it'll get four counters, and uh, so that's that's just a huge thing in itself. And then off the second boss rush, I will get Tetrin because Tetrin will be able to summon uh, summon cards. Um, let's see. Let's see. This card, okay, I was like, wait a second, wasn't I supposed to not be able to, uh, to, uh, chain Dimension Barrier to his Eidolon Summon magic? But no, Reckless Magic Circle says he can't respond to the Fusion Monster's Summon. Okay. Alright, so from here, I've got Warning, which is pretty strong. I've got Starlight Road, so again, Twin Twister would make a Stardust come out, so we're gonna offer a rematch and see if it gets taken. The rematch was not taken. Sad times for me, and now I'm going second again. Damn it! Oh no! My rock paper scissors game is definitely just not the strongest. Uh, but that's okay because this hand was terrible for going first. You've got to draw the field spell with this deck. You have to, 100%. It cannot be debated. You have to. Okay. Well, a hero lives. Is this the same guy I played before? I don't think it is. But I mean, this is still a dark law deck, so I guess we'll take it. It'll, we'll, it'll just have to go. And this is great, because this means we play against fusion-based decks for the entirety of this video. I've won against two of them going second. Let's see if we can do that again. Um, now, what needs to happen here? Really, he's doing this now. Hmm. That means he, that, that just forecasts to me that he has instant fusion. That's all that forecasts to me. Or he has e-call, but no, that still means that you probably still should have set the card. Hmm. Instant fusion? No, tin goldfish? What? There was n no reason to use that now. I'm going to chalk that up to a misclick, potentially? Oh well. But So what needs to happen is that he's going to make Bahama Shark and Toad, <laughs> which means I'm not going to probably be able to play this game. Uh, because Dark Law, if I draw Terraforming, I have to activate it, get my Field Spell, and then hope that he doesn't snipe it out of my hand with the Dark Law, and then activate the Field Spell, and then hope that he doesn't negate it with Toad. Well, that's not the Field Spell. And I don't play any cards like uh, like the Mirror Forces, which I mean probably would be a good addition actually, like Storming Mirror Force or or Quaking, something like that would probably be good. Storming probably better just because of the fact that it clears all the threats out of the way for my big ships to like just attack. Uh, but so we're gonna set all of these cards, and I'm going to I'm not afraid of activating Dimension Barrier and letting him take it, um, because if he activates Bahamut Shark's effect, I'm just going to Dimension Barrier it. Um, okay, so Battle Phase first, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. Um, and so what's going to happen here is... Okay, so here's the situation. What I get to do here, since I've got multiple barriers and strike, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be able to activate barrier on his Bahamut Shark, forcing Toad, and I'm not going to have enough life for, uh, for a strike. So that's going to be the problem. Um, yeah, that's that's just a problem. I'm at 800, so now that's just an issue. Really? No other, no second Toad? Okay. Well, this hand is completely unplayable. <laughs> so, not like it matters anywho, any way, any how. Uh, because I could play Instant Fusion. Does this have to be sent to the graveyard or destroyed? If this card is destroyed instead of the graveyard. I was going to Instant Fusion it and then, like, and then Tribute to summon my Tetran. Um... And then that would have been uh, that would have been cheeky, but yeah, I can't I can't win this one. I can't win this one at all. So I'm just gonna surrender to this, and I'm just gonna call it here, just because this is a little bit rough around the edges in terms of the way my old formatted videos used to be. But I can feel myself starting to get back into a groove to where I'm not like uncomfortable talking and making plays at the same time. I'm not uncomfortable filling the gaps of my own gameplay with talking. Like that was a problem is that I tried. And it was, uh, it was a really long video where I was playing against my, uh, one of my friends, and like, it, it was just very, very stale, because I would focus too much on gameplay, and I wouldn't speak, and I would have a lot of radio silence, as they call it. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, I'm gonna leave it here, and I'm probably going to, uh, do some of the things that I mentioned, or, and, uh, I'll probably leave a, uh, a straw poll link in the description. So if you made it this far into the video, congrats. You get to be one of the people that gets to, uh, that gets to uh, decide how this goes. Should I open a Patreon page where I have a certain uh, pledger 
um, amount that gets access to a Discord page to where you, or a Discord server where you get to just talk with me and play with me um, and schedule like recording sessions with me. Should I form like a group of people that I just record with and keep it exclusive to those, or should I just live stream? And, uh, and try to record videos for that. But I mean, that would get a little weird as well because I'd be, I'd be trying to live stream and then as well as that, I'd be trying to record videos. I don't know how that one would work. I think the Patreon one is probably a bit more and the Patreon pledging thing would be relatively low. I don't think it would be any sort of major thing. I've been thinking about opening a Patreon anyway just for uh, just because of the fact that YouTube's algorithms are going to shit. But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and if you like the video, definitely be sure to like and subscribe. Definitely subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more content. Helps me out a ton and helps the channel and community within it grow. And if this video can get a ton of likes, then I will know that it is something that you want me to keep doing. But other than that, check out the links on screen and maybe go check out my channel itself to find more videos you might like. There's a thousand plus videos over there, so if you go there and you can't find another video that you like, I would be incredibly surprised. But as I already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, and take care guys. I'll see you in the next video.